Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ilva Tara and I'm a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Europe Center here in Washington, D.C. This is Balkan's debrief. The Ohrid summit between uh, Kosovo Prime Minister Albin Kurti and Serbian President Alexander Vucic, mediated by the European Union and supported by the United States, could be an historic chance to lock in full normalization of relations between Serbia and Kosovo. Both parties are being pressured by the West not to miss this opportunity, which we are told will speed up both countries' Euro-Atlantic integration process. My guests today are Jovana Radosabjevic, Executive Director of the new social initiative based in Mitrovica in North Kosovo, and Bisar Umeri, Executive Director, Institute for Social Policy, Musine Kokalari. Welcome both to Balkan's Debrief. Thank you. Thank you. What are your expectations for the summit in Ohrid, Jovana and Bisar? Jovana, with you first. Well, uh, there have been high expectations for the meeting uh, on the 27th, and then we really are left with kind of a bitter uh, feeling after that one. Then again, the expectations are still high from the Ohrid meeting on the 18th. There was a series of the bilateral meetings and visit from Lychak and then uh, uh, Escobar as well, but uh, there is a lot of pessimism, I have to say, on the ground. I think the optimism and uh, hope to see something really moving forward comes only from the international mediators from the EU and the US, while uh, uh, on the ground uh, we see very little or no movement, uh, especially coming in from the Kosovo side regarding the establishment of the ASM. So this is the kind of the key topic uh, of the dialogue at this moment, and it seems like there has been no progress whatsoever on this topic up to this point. So when it comes to the expectations, I personally, from what I can analyze, uh, cannot say that we can see anything significant, but there will be at least some step forward just kind of as a show of good faith to continue the negotiations. I think it will also be necessary regarding the upcoming events uh, in Kosovo. There are the upcoming elections for the mayors and the municipalities in the north, uh, with that other things linked, like the reintegration of the Kosovo Serbs, the the institution, Serbs Kalista participating. But I think the biggest enemy in this current moment is time. I think we just don't have too much enough time to, to deal with all the necessary issues. So I see, Jovana, you have a cautious uh, attitude towards this uh, uh, summit. How about you, Visar? I have to say I'm a bit more optimistic. I had the chance to speak to Jovana about this as well like last week. I think that we are moving towards an agreement, uh, a political agreement uh, between our leaders. So uh, obviously, I will certainly hope that there is going to be an agreement. Uh, we as representatives of civil society actually uh, made a joint appeal just two days ago, uh, as calling on both Kurti and Vucic to reach an agreement, because I think that that is a very important step forward, not just in Kosovo-Serbia relations. I think that it would, it's a necessary step forward towards a better cooperation, coexistence between the different communities within Kosovo as well. And I think that that is a very important step in regional cooperation, which we all need and want. So in this terms, I think that uh, it would be high time, and I expect it for it to be high time for our leaders as well, to start understanding these importances and how, uh, uh, how necessary it is for our countries to have a normalized relations. An agreement, uh, whether it be a signed agreement, which I don't expect, or an agreement in, in, in principle on the on the implementation of the uh, European plan that might happen, happen in Ohrid is not the end of the process. I think that that opens a new process, which is going to be very difficult and uh, which I think is going to be uh, to take the best part of this year, if not the whole year in negotiations. But I think that uh, this would be a sort of like a, a cornerstone into a prolonged dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia. And I think that uh, some very promising uh, statements are coming, especially from United States diplomats. I heard Mr. Escobar saying yesterday or today in, from Belgrade that actually a final agreement, which is going to be legally binding, is also expected and possible to happen during this year, which would be a great news. Will this implementation of the, of the agreement be possible in your view, what are the main challenges and what could successful implementation mean for Kosovo, for Kosovo Serbs and for Serbia? Jovana, 
Well, when it comes to the implementation, the crucial issue is that we, it seems like, don't have at the moment, and I am a bit pessimistic, uh, I, I'm sorry for that, uh, but uh, I think it's the lack of political will. I think that this is the, the key ingredient in the process that is completely missing at this point. It feels like that the both sides are waiting for the other side to blink. It seems like that the circumstances in which the dialogue is happening right now is, is not really constructive. It is The atmosphere is just not right um, in comparison, for example, to 2011 or 2013. But uh, the good thing is that we have um, uh, on multiple occasions repeated statements coming in from the international community, specifically from the US and the, and the EU about the window opportunity and this high alert of the international community to see this through. Again, it is going to be very important to find uh, political will in the, the parties negotiating and to move forward with, uh, first of all, uh, implementation of what has been agreed, but also uh, moving forward as well. Again, the, I think that the, the biggest problem, as I mentioned before, is the, the association of the Serb majority municipalities. And, and from what I have just learned today, it seems like there has been no movement uh, on the Kosovo side on, on the acceptance. So that's why this is what it makes it, is making me actually quite, quite pessimistic. And then um, it will take time uh, and it will require quite a bit of things to be resolved in the process before we can actually move forward. We would need to readdress the developments in the past months and in the last half of the last year. Um, specifically, I'm referring here to the withdrawal from the institutions of Srpska Lista and Kosovo Serbs. So there needs to be uh, a commitment of Srpska Lista or a certain incentive for them to actually partake in the elections. So that would be a very important step, but also creating conditions for people that love the institutions to, to be able to return, at least those who want. So I think those are the kind of uh, uh, preconditions in order to move forward. But uh, everything seems to be there. The international community commitment is there. The incentives from the international community seem that they're ready. We just really need to see from Belgrade and Pristina, the actual will to move forward with this. From what you know until now, Jovana, who's not ready, uh, Pristina or Belgrade, especially on the association? Well from the, the the meeting that uh, uh that meetings that i had uh today and yesterday uh i must say that uh, there is an increase in frustration in the international community regarding the position of pristina regarding uh the forming of the association and actually agreeing on the fact that kosovo is obliged uh to implement it um I think this is very much missing. So if we move from this point to the point of the actual Kosovo committing to it, I think this opens the space about discussing the actual modalities and the ways of how this association would be established. But also this is, it feels like a prerequisite for everything else to happen within the implementation annex um, and what it will contain. Bissar, what are the main challenges that you envision? Well, yeah, this has been one of the challenges, uh, the position of the government of Kosovo, especially the Kosovo prime minister towards the association and uh, the necessity for it to, to be established uh, has been one of the obstacles. Uh, the other obstacle has been uh, uh, the way that uh, President Vucic of Serbia uh, dealt with the other issues when it comes to uh, to the necessary uh, compromise that Serbia has to do in the agreement. I think that in general, the most important thing to me would have been, and I'm not sure about this, obviously, I can only talk about what I read from outside, is that both leaders understand that there, there is a need for compromise and disagree. And I think that this is the first step. It seems like a very difficult step, but to me, that is the easier step compared to the other steps. What would be the difficult step, which I think, is not just agreeing on paper on how the association is going to uh, look like and what is the modality that is going to provide for more uh, self-management and autonomy for the Serbian community in Kosovo. I think that actually implementing that on ground uh, would be the most uh, difficult thing because there we would have to deal with the way that people have been uh, used to think and act for a very long time. And I think that this is where we need to uh, put more focus on and we have discussed this in many times uh, among the civil society uh, friends that it is actually the agreement between Kosovo and Serbia should not just be an agreement between politicians. It should be a transformative agreement for the people. 
the way they, that they live, the way that they think, the way that they behave. So basically through the agreement and especially the association of Serb majority municipalities, we as a majority community have to show the Serbian community that Kosovo is their country as well. But then through the agreement, through the agreement, the international community and Serbia have to show that they understand that there is a country called Kosovo, which so wants to live in peace with the others. For both, for Serbia and uh, for uh, Kosovo societies. I think that if this agreement or the agreements to be reached in this process, if they don't achieve to transform both societies and the region overall, they are not going to be good agreements. So to me, a good agreement would be that agreement that transforms the relations between them. So when, when Jovana is mentioning the difficulties on the ground, there are difficulties that mostly come out of mistrust, both in terms of the relation between Vucic and Kurti, but especially in terms of the relation between communities in Kosovo. We have to acknowledge the fact that we don't trust each other and we need to build that trust. Can the two leaders, Vucic and Kurti, at this moment rise to this historic moment, even though uh, we are told they are quite personally hostile to each other? And I'm sure you know that too. And can they take responsibility for their decision before uh, their respective uh, citizens, uh, the societies that Visar is talking about? Uh, yeah, well, I think that, that the, the two leaders now, in uh, both in Serbia and in Kosovo, have all the tools to actually come in agreement and ensure that its implementation. It is uh, their acceptance and, and uh, the, the, the kind of in, in the kind of with the voters and also kind of the strength of their governments. I think is really something that is could ensure this uh, uh, smooth uh, agreement and smooth implementation. Again, I think it really depends on the political will and on the fact that there it is a very hostile environment that they're conducting these negotiations and and they're coming from the perspective of really not trusting each other. So this lack of trust on the, the political level between two parties is having this spillover over effect over, over all of us. But I think that now is definitely the momentum. Uh, it is because uh, of the actual uh, uh, interest of the international community, support of the international community in the process, but also the promised incentives if um, if uh, they actually move forward. I think it's also really important, the message that we heard in the past uh, coming in from the, the EU and the US, US uh, officials is that the party that really shows lack of constructivity in the process is really showing the lack of will to uh, normalize the relations and to actually that is not interested in the EU path. So there's really strong messages coming in that I think lead to a very clear path to the both sides of what direction they should go. I fully agree. I think that, well, first, they have the potential to do so in terms of uh, popularity, in terms of the power that they have. They are both very popular leaders. They have both won elections on their own without coalitions. So they're very strong politically, uh, which is a good and a bad thing. Good if they wanted to reach an agreement, they would, they could. A bad thing if they don't want to reach an agreement, they can stop it because there's nobody to replace them in a sense. But I think that I personally believe that they will reach an agreement because they will understand that there is no alternative. But then the reasons behind coming to an agreement to me are problematic because I don't see this agreement coming as a sort of personal conviction that they are doing this for the better of the people. This is an agreement that is coming sort of like pushed by the Western world. And I think that that is a problem with the agreement. I mean, there's a good thing that we, we can come to a speedier agreement because of the international help. But at the same time, that becomes a problem because, again, this is not going to be an agreement that Kosovo and Serbia reach for a better future, but an agreement that we have been told to, to, uh, that needs to be reached, and which then creates a lot of difficulties when it comes to, uh, to implementation. I think that neither Kurti nor Vucic uh, 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 would reach an agreement with each other out of uh, personal conviction. And I think that this is a very important shortcoming when it comes to a political lead. And to an extent, they don't see compromise as the way to do politics, which, again, is a very uh, a huge obstacle to a democratic policymaker. So, Visar, I agree. They are being pressured to, to have this deal and this agreement. But on the other hand, they are free to negotiate their terms of the agreement. So this is where their skills as politicians uh, should be uh, played, you know? 
Well, I uh, would. Uh, I think you, we have to go back a bit on the history. I think that uh, this dialogue, which has been facilitated by uh, European Union and always uh, backed by United States of America, has given a lot of time for Kosovo and Serbia, not just these two leaders, but whoever were the leaders of the countries, uh, to reach an agreement on their own. So basically, the floor was open. You can talk about things and see where you agree or not. But I think that we wasted a lot of time without reaching an agreement until we came to a realization or our Western partners came to a realization that maybe an agreement between Kosovo and Serbia would not be possible if we leave just Kosovo and Serbia thinking about it. So I think that there is a lot more intervention in this last year and this year around compared to the past, which again, I think is a good thing because we are coming faster to an agreement. But then it's a bad thing because we are not learning from our mistakes. So I hope that this agreement and this time around, we will learn from our mistakes. There are a lot of other agreements that Kosovo and Serbia would need to reach in the, in the future. And I think that I hope that we are paving the way for these future agreements to be reached by ourselves, understanding that they are for the benefit of our people. Neither Vucic, neither Vucic nor, Kos, uh, nor Kurti would call the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia as something that they want. It is something that they are, have been uh, pushed to do. And I think that this is where the problem starts. Yeah. Let me ask you about the, uh, the association. So the EU special representative, Miroslav Lajcev, stated in this program uh, that there are 16 European models where the association of uh, Kosovo Serbs municipalities can be based upon. Are you aware of any model that is specifically being considered? Jovana? Uh, from my knowledge, uh, yes, there are 16 models that have been offered to the Kosovo side and a clear message both from the EU and the US that it's on Kosovo to decide on the modality. The problem is at this point, we still have not received the confirmation coming in from the Kosovo side that they will establish the ASM. I think this is the moment where we are still far away from actually discussing discussing the modalities. So I think that this first step needs to be completed in order to, to, to proceed. So yeah, I, I don't think there has been any progress in, in, in there whatsoever, but I think with this uh, big enemy of time that we have, I think that it would oh, possibly we would experience certain push coming in from the outside with imposing a certain model that will work if Kosovo is not really keen on taking it up themselves. The thing is that is really important is that, uh, the, it really needs to be kind of the change of perspectives in both societies, in both Kosovo and Serbia, of the motives for reaching a deal. This is very problematic. It seems like this is a concession because we have obligations to the international community. Um, specifically in Kosovo regarding the ASM, the main, those who are supporting and saying, yes, the ASM should be established, say it because the uh, argument is because this is an international obligation, which I believe is a very wrong way of setting things up long term and in regards to the actual relationship between the communities living on the ground. This is the obligation of the Kosovo government towards Kosovo Serbs. And this way, this would be a body that would actually ensure the uh, access to services to this community and most possibly the continuity of the existing existing services that, that now exist. So um, it will really re require, again, a lot of political will, but I think we're just not there yet. Bissar, how do you see uh, the way the Kosovo government is uh, talking to its citizens about the necessity to form the association? The problem is that they're not talking about it, anything, when it comes to the dialogue. Well, I've heard uh, from I think that... Uh, now, the models I, that were offered from the European. Yeah, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, I mean, it, uh, uh, it, I fully agree with Giovanna here is that the problem with Kosovo government has been that they have been very non transparent on one side and on the other side, they have never had this discussion uh, with uh, the citizens of Kosovo, first and foremost, and then with the Serbian community in particular, because we are talking about an arrangement, a potential arrangement, a model which uh, has a single purpose in mind, and that is how to best serve. And not just the needs that Kosovo community or Serb community in Kosovo have, but also uh, their expectations, so the potential fears that they might have from living in Kosovo, which are present, and we have to uh, uh, acknowledge that fact and deal with it. I think that uh, the government of Kosovo, and not just this government of Kosovo, but all the governments of Kosovo, have made the mistake of considering the Serbian community as somebody else's responsibility. 
And I think that this is this needs to change if we want to to build a cohesive society. Because the cost of a serve community is the responsibility of cost of a government as the other communities are in the same manner. So I think that uh, uh, from the models, what what has been uh, sort of like uh, 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 talked about is that we might see a combination of different attributes from different European models in order to create something that would be applicable to Kosovo and especially uh, uh, would be acceptable for the Serbian community in Kosovo. So I think that these are uh, these are what 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 is on the table. What is the Kosovo government going to do? That's uh, uh, still unknown to me. I again, I think that they are going to say uh, eventually yes because they have to say yes. But then what kind of a combination we are going to have, that is obviously going to be negotiated, not just with the government in Belgrade, but also with the international mediators, which is a very important thing. But I think that the different and certain elements are going to be taken from different models, like how, how do, uh, let's say, uh, municipal uh, or local governments cooperate with each other when they, when they have a joint border, as the municipalities in the north are. How would they then municip these municipalities be linked to the southern uh, Serb majority municipalities like Sturz and Gracaniza, where they don't share, uh, share a, 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 a municipal boundary? How are the finances from Serbia going to be organized? Is that going to be the model of the Danish minority in Germany? Uh, so all of these things are going to be discussed to find the best suitable model, which would do two things. One, keep the functionality of Kosovo. As a, as a republic, and at the same time address all the needs and uh, uh, requests by the Serbian community. But the problem is that this, and again, this, I mean, I know that it needs to be negotiated with both Belgrade, Brussels, and Washington. But the, 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 the most important negotiation, if I may call it like that, is to talk to Kosovo Serbs. Because this is an association which is being built to serve them. Nobody knows better than them, what they need. Uh, Jovana, have there been any attempts from the Kosovo's government to talk to Kosovo Serbs uh, in uh, Kosovo? Uh, well, in a way, yes, but not uh, in a productive way, I must say. Uh, this government now has uh, campaigned in the, uh, with uh, the, the promise of the internal dialogue, but it really didn't happen until quite recently. And, and and with the mediation of the international community. So it was always initiatives that are actually either organized or led by the international community representatives. And these meetings were not really as constructive because it felt like they were a tick the box exercise. Um, and what is the most important thing is that the government really failed to speak to the political representatives. I mean, there is one party, um, Kosovo government doesn't see it as a constructive party. They see them as a tool of Belgrade. Still, they are the party representing the Serbian community in Kosovo on the central and local level. And the government has the responsibility to find a way to communicate with them. There is no option in these circumstances with a lack of democratic options and actual political options to bypass the elected representatives and go in and talk, for example, to civil society. We as civil society, every time we were invited, we participate in this meeting, we provided our inputs, but we have not really seen any uh, movement in that direction. Also, we are not decision makers. So any message that we would re be receiving, we would not be able to really, I mean, as civil society, we really are already witnessing a significant stigma. Um, that's, I think, generally a thing for the Western Balkans, but I think for the Serbian community, especially that you dealing with that and the lack of trust in the community uh, on our motives, why we exist, in addition, communicating with the Kosovo government that is perceived by the community as very hostile due to developments in the last months. It is a very uneasy position for us. So, uh, yes, there, there were opportunities for the government to hear out different voices and different inputs coming in, but none of those inputs, unfortunately, have been taken into consideration and actually addressed. Well, here we can give recommendations and we are uh, listening to your perspective. Uh, Jovana, from the perspective of Kosovo a Serb uh, in Kosovo, how do you think, do you have any recommendation how this uh, ASM should work? What kind of structure should have? What is the possible model that can be followed or models that can be uh, merged together to make it more applicable in Kosovo? 
Well, uh, uh, the ASM topic is very important for the Kosovo Serb community. Even internally, there is not much of the discussion. I think for the community, especially in the north of Kosovo, there are other issues that they feel that there are more burning uh, issues, like the presence, permanent presence of the uh, special units of the Kosovo police, the whole problem with the, the expropriations of the land served for the building of the bases of these special units, uh, for the, the arrests that were happening and the perception of uh, everybody ended up being ending being the subject of the arrest so the, the the trust between the citizens and the central level institution is so damaged that it will take a lot of time to be repaired it is not repairable but it re really would take time and the asm would actually possibly be a tool to do that um what is important that what we know from the asm uh, having to really cover the basic services the not only the Serbian community, but the communities living in Kosovo that actually depend on these services. There are other ethnic groups that actually benefit from the healthcare system and the education system. So in these specific cases, they will be necessary to have the actual continuity of services, but also the quality of services. And this is not going to be easy. We cannot just cut off one system and start with the other because they are completely different. So there needs to be creative solutions and in order way to kind of like finding the, the right model to do so. Additionally, economic development is actually quite an important element uh, as well, especially because of the high dependency of the Serbian community on the services and the income coming in from the Serbian government. So this would actually work on empowering the local community. But finally, urban and rural planning is becoming an increasingly more important issue, especially now with the, the, the um, ongoing case of the expropriated land uh, in the north uh, that actually didn't follow the actual government procedures. So there are very um, important issues that will be addressed to the ASM. Uh, and that's why uh, I think it would actually be something that it is in the Kosovo's interest to, to establish and to ensure that through this body, the actual needs and concerns of this community will be will be addressed. So it will actually lead to some sort of a self-management, as we saw as a new term in, in the basing agreement. Now that the services actually that were provided until now from the outside for this community would actually be now managed internally by the community itself. So, Visar, what's your uh, opinion on the structure, on the name, may not be called uh, association or something else? What should be uh, this uh, association of uh, Kosovo Serb municipalities? First, I don't think that the name is that important. I think that this uh, energy that our prime minister has invested into trying to, 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 to change the name is uh, something that, is, uh, that has a purpose to be used for internal politics. I don't think that that is going to affect uh, the substance at all. Uh, the second thing is that I think that uh, uh, we have uh, in, in, our, in our discussion in Kosovo when it comes to the association of Serb majority municipalities, regardless of a, the very huge populistic approach towards it, even when there was attempt to, to discuss it in a more rational way, uh, we started from uh, fears rather than possibilities. So I think that one of the reasons why the Association of Serb Majority Municipalities is viewed as this, uh, this, uh, this mechanism which is going to ruin the Republic of Kosovo was that we have never discussed about it as something that might actually benefit Kosovo in terms of integration and cooperation between, between communities. I mean, if that is something that would make Kosovo Serbs feel free, welcomed, and at home in Kosovo, which would be then, to me, the bridge for integration and cooperation. Now, that would be in benefit of Kosovo, but cannot be detrimental to Kosovo. Non-integration would have been detrimental to Kosovo. So in these terms, I think that my recommendation, not just, just to the Prime Minister, because I don't have you know, concrete recommendations, I think that that needs to be discussed basically with the people that are going to use it mostly. I'm not going to use the services from the Association of Serb Majority Municipalities. Therefore, I don't think that I'm entitled to say, do this and don't do this. But I think that in general, this has to be viewed as a means to accommodate a part of our society, which is going to make our whole society stronger. And in terms of the agreement with, uh, with Serbia, because these two things are linked, Kosovo is going to benefit because for the first time after many years, we will have new prospects and possibilities for our international subjectivity, which is going to open new possibilities for our economy, for our young people, 
in order to be able to have better education, more travel, more development, more well-being for all of us. And I think that this, that's why I think that this is a very important uh, step into a, a better life that we all see. I don't think that it's either wise nor substantiated for the majority community in Kosovo to see Serbs as, as a threat and as a risk. I mean, you cannot live in that field forever. So I think that it is time for us to, to sort of like change the page and start to look differently at our country and, the, and the, the, the needs and the possibilities that our country has. And also made these courageous deals uh, in order to provide uh, equal access to all, all citizens of Kosovo. Thank you very much, Visar and Jovana, for sharing your perspective, uh, perspective with us in this crucial moment, I believe. Uh, deal or no deal, signing or no signing ceremony, it's important to start working, as what you said, uh, to transform the society, uh, both in Kosovo and Serbia. I really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you for following us as well. You can uh, be part of this conversation and uh, uh, co communicate to us by uh, joining us at uh, AC Europe in Twitter. Thank you.